Not long after Hurricane Adalia made a mess of northern Florida, we have something potentially even bigger right behind her. We're going to waste no time today, guys. Let's dig into what the tropics are looking like because it looks like September is going to come in with a bang. Welcome, 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 everybody. This is Weather Center Nazario, episode 17. And as you can see on the National Hurricane Center homepage, we have a lot going on. The Atlantic Basin is very densely crowded, and we have a nice little grouping going on with tropical systems over the northwestern Atlantic. Tropical Depression 12 has formed up over the last six hours. We just recently started receiving advisories concerning that feature, and GERT continues to hold on to intensity, while Jose and Franklin become best friends, getting in real close proximity of one another. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next 24 hours with those cyclones getting so close together. This is how what I want to pay close attention to right now, okay? Everybody out here just hanging out for the Labor Day weekend is going to pose no credible threat outside of the remnants of Adalia, the post-tropical remnants, I should say, affecting Bermuda. It is expected to pass almost directly overhead, so you guys could see a period of enhanced tropical storm force winds, lots of increased surf, especially being an island location. You're not anticipated to see any weakening trend, and it does not look to be as fast moving as it was over the southeastern United States, simply because of the steering pattern that we have in place. That's kind of why we have a very unique grouping of four different cyclone centers in such close proximity to one another. Tropical Depression 12 is likely to take on the Katia name. However, it looks fairly weak. A lot of the models are indicating that we might see a very low-grade tropical storm form out of Tropical Depression 12, but she is more than likely going to track off almost due north away from any major landmass and is slowly but surely even becoming less of an influence for our Cape Verde Island down to our southeast. Let's get into disturbance number three, though. Disturbance number three on windy.com. You can see it plain as day, getting ready to come off of Western Africa. This is 925 millibars, and you can see that we already have what looks to be a closed center of circulation making its way between the discontinuity from continental land into open water. The MDR is very hot. The MDR is very scarce of any dry or dusty air, which was very, very traditional for earlier this part of the year. We're now in September, folks. Today is a wonderful September 1st. It's a Friday. So if it's a fun Friday by nature, like we always aim to make it, then this system is going to have some fun once it gets over open water. If we continue to ascend the atmosphere, we go up to 850 millibars, you can see that there is a center of circulation that becomes even more readily apparent. So we already have a little bit of stacking with this disturbance. We already have some cyclonic curvature before it even makes its way off into the Atlantic. And one of the main concerning reasons we're on Windy, and I want you guys to look at this closely alongside me, is take a look at what we have just downstream of this system. When I use the term downstream, that means out ahead. If you think of it from a perspective of going down a river, downstream would be what's in front of you, and back upstream in relation to which way you're flowing down the river would be back behind you. Right now, our disturbance is upstream of something very important for its life cycle. Look at this anticyclonic spin right here, and as I draw this arrow, what I'm trying to indicate to you all is difluence aloft. This is in the mid-levels. Don't get me wrong, it's in the mid-levels, but as we go up one more height. Let's go up to 700 millibars. You can see we still have a decent amount of difluence aloft in front of this system. We lose a representation of that anticyclone, but essentially what I'm trying to hint at you guys is there is upward vertical motion in the low levels. So the thunderstorm activity associated with this disturbance is going to have no other direction to go besides even higher up into the atmosphere. And another alarming position where this system is coming off is it's in a lower latitude, and we have nothing but prevailing easterly winds driving this system off to the west throughout much of its lifetime spent in the main development region before maybe even crossing into the Caribbean Sea where a lot of folks are going to need to be on guard. You guys are definitely going to have to pay attention to these upcoming updates and watch day by day exactly how this system propagates off to the west. So we're going to look at the United States AOI for the GFS. The main reason being we are at forecast hour 54 of the 0Z run. I want you guys to look closely at this because this is really what's going to influence what happens when this storm 
Trump gets into close proximity of the United States. One of the main steering factors while she's still out in the Atlantic is going to be the surface high pressure that's typically over the central Atlantic, if not situated back over the Azores, or you've heard a lot of us mention it countless times, the Bermuda or Azores high wandering back and forth. The position and the intensity of this high is going to determine if it goes up north and out to sea, posing no sensible threat to anybody unless you're unfortunate enough to be out there fishing, cruising, etc. in its path. Or if it moves further south, closer to the Caribbean islands, the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico. I have a lot of relatives down there and old relatives that need to pay close attention to what this system does over the next 72 to 96 hours because it's going to be very telling of what's ahead if we see a well-established surface high pressure in the Central Atlantic region. Now, going forward in time with the GFS, I want us to look closely off the coastline. I'm looking at the southeastern quadrant of the United States. You can see we still have some baroclinic features working their way over the upper Great Lakes, moving into the northeastern states before exiting into eastern Canada. And as we get towards the very tail end of the run, we're now into September 11th. This is what I want you guys to look at right here. There is a little bit of very light orangish red shading here. And what that indicates based on this model product is surface high pressure ridging. And the ridging is coming from the central parts of the Atlantic and moving off to the west, basically expanding into the southeast and mid-Atlantic states. The reason I bring this up is if we go just a little further into the future, look at that bad boy coming across Cuba into the Bahamas and then right off the coast of the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area. It's looking very... Irma Dorian like. However, albeit it's only at 981 millibars, we'd still have a solid Cat 1, Cat 2 hurricane planted over the Bahamas. And this is critical. The GFS has been trending in this manner the last few days. Luckily, as it begins to deepen over the Gulf Stream waters, I should say just to the east of where the Gulf Stream current runs. It's right up in this general area. Regardless, it's in a very favorable environment, lots of good tropical moisture and hot water to feed off of. It looks like the model is anticipating some kind of a baroclinic feature coming across the northern tier states with an associated frontal boundary draped out ahead of it or down to the south of it. And that's what's going to help to very quickly usher this storm away from another major landfall for the southeast. We've barely said goodbye to Idalia. She's still out in the Atlantic as we're bracing for whatever this system decides to throw at us. So needless to say, we're not getting much room to breathe. The tropics are really putting the pressure on. You can see this on the latest run of the Euro. We have a rapidly deepening system. At 72 hours out, we start to see a little semblance of a circulation in the eastern central main development region. At 96 hours out, four days out, we have a depression at this point. There is a closed isobar indicating a center of circulation. And then forget it. Once you get to 120 hours, we're looking at tropical storm intensity. 144 hours, we're now approaching Cat 1. And then at the very tail end of the loop, we are down to 972. You can see we do have a central high-pressure ridge over the north and central Atlantic. It's kind of flip-flopping between Bermuda and the Azores, and that's what the Euro model is indicating could help steer it just to the north of our Caribbean friends down there, for those of you watching. Does this mean that this is the end-all, be-all? No. Does this mean that it's directly coming towards you guys or for sure definitively going away? Absolutely not. We are at 180 hours out. This is the 9th of September on this chart. There is so much room and margin of error that could possibly wobble back and forth in the intensity of this high. We transition over to the Canadian model. The Canadian model did the absolute best. I give it high praise for the way this model handled Idalia's formation. I saw Idalia taking shape 9 to 10 days before the system was even in the Western Caribbean, so I give a little more credit to the Canadian model as of most recently. And as we go through time, what's been a bit disturbing in my opinion, and I'm not hyping it, I'm just simply explaining what I've noticed routinely checking in with these models day to day, is as we go forward in time, we have a low grade cat one approaching cat two hurricane in the western mdr slowly beginning to transition northward and as we go further and further through time what the canadian model wants to do is reinforce high pressure ridging over the northeast and to the western extent of our azores high almost preventing these systems from making a quick escape towards bermuda this current iteration of the canadian model leaves bermuda in pretty good standing what I want to put a little more emphasis on is the fact that this has been quickly trending in a westward fashion over the last few days. If we go back to, we'll go Wednesday at zero Zulu, 
Once it loads up, you can see we have a 997 millibar tropical storm way out into the central Atlantic, far from any major landmass. It continues to transition to the north very quickly, posing no sensible threat to the Bahamas, to the Caribbean islands, anyone in the Antilles, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic recently affected by Franklin. This has been very troublesome. I don't know if the Canadian model is picking up on something a little different, but as you can see, 12 Zulu yesterday, we see a bit more of a westward track towards the Bermuda Island. And then as of today, 12 Z Friday, look at the huge difference in where the model has it placed. A lot further south with a rigorous system spinning up behind it, and then one more back behind it coming off of Africa. I will admit, typically we lean on the Icon forecast model, the German model, for initial wave development, but the Canadian model's been doing very good with initial development and a little wishy-washy with intensity. Path has been good, development has been fairly decent, run-to-run, -run, it's initialized well with Adalia, Franklin, and so on, so I take this with a bit more confidence than I would have if we were still in the very beginning of hurricane season with no experience or, I guess you could say, history monitoring these models. Very quickly, folks, this is the 12 Zulu run of the Icon. The ICON has been fervent in taking this system off west-northwest towards the Caribbean islands, especially the Lesser Antilles. As you can see at this point, the run, this is September 7th. This is September 7th at 12Z. We have a tropical storm headed right for the Lesser Antilles. The ICON has been very persistent in tracking it right towards our northern Antilles, towards Puerto Rico. And the ICON has been very good as well in terms of overall consensus with what it wants this storm to do or what it's predicting this storm to do and what's a little more concerning as well as the icon has a very potent high pressure all across the Atlantic, which is, I think, why it wants to force this system on a more west-northwest track. And you can see over the Great Lakes, the lower Great Lakes, upper Ohio, Mississippi Valley, and the United States, if you shift your gaze over a little bit, there's a 1019, I believe, a 1019 high advecting off to the east, which could possibly reinforce what we see over the Atlantic. So the icon is looking a little more dark and grim on the horizon. Now, very quickly, we're going to rush through the dynamics and play. Going forward, this is the sixth Zulu run of the Euro. We don't have a whole lot of data on tropical tidbits just yet, so we're going to stay right here and look at this. But over the MDR, we don't have a whole lot in the way of shear. There's really no shear whatsoever. And I mean, even in the Caribbean, if we get a Caribbean sea system, there isn't a whole lot of shear that this system's going to have to do battle with. And then it goes without saying, if you switch on over to our relative humidity to check in and see what kind of moisture we have in the air, there's our system right there. And out ahead of it, downstream, I'm going to use that term again, we have some dry air but this is still way off in front of it. It's not going to rotate into the center and kind of suffocate it like we've seen with earlier systems in June and July. And as you can see, as we go through time, there is a bit of a washing out. It only goes so far in the six Zulu Euro, but looking at later model runs and longer term into the future, it looks like this dry air begins to subside a little bit with the introduction of increased MDR moisture. We have a lot of an influx of moisture coming off of Africa that's going to help to keep this dry air somewhat at bay. It will still be there, but it won't provide as much of a dissipating factor to whatever it is that comes off of Africa and immediately starts pushing west, especially if they move slow enough. Okay, now we move on to some of the ensemble products. The ensembles are in very good agreement that we're going to have a solid Cat 2 hurricane, if not a major hurricane, parked somewhere to the north of the Caribbean or unfortunately scraping across the northern Caribbean islands into the Bahamas. So this is why I want to put extra pressure on those of you watching to please keep up with me, keep up with your weather channel of desire, of choice. Please keep up with something because we are now right at the top. We're nearly hitting the top of peak hurricane season, and this is likely to continue with the dynamics and the favorable environment we have in play between now and the beginning of October. So we could maybe have systems of this stature coming at us until October 9th or 10th, give or take, based on long run charts for environmental favorability. Right here, folks, I'm using the GEFS Ensemble product off of National Hurricane Center, and it goes without saying, once again, I'll use my pen to highlight. You can see just how much GFS agreement we have with an MDR system form up pretty rapidly and kicking off to the west northwest whether or not it goes too far to the north or further west in the caribbean like the operational runs have been hinting towards the last number of runs we've had over the last 36 to 48 hours that remains to be seen we're going to have to do a lot of careful extrapolation and analysis with what's going on over interior parts of the atlantic in terms of our baroclinic features working their way off of the united states and how strong or potent of a high pressure system we have across the atlantic and whether it be parked a little 
little further to the northeast, front and center of the Atlantic, or, God forbid, a little further to the west, which will continue to push these storms closer and closer to our area of responsibility. This is also something I wanted to take a look at because, again, over the last 24 hours, we've seen nothing but a generalized increase in our probability of something taking shape. At 144 hours out, mind you, this is no longer the tropical depression parameters. This is tropical storm. Tropical storm favorability in terms of development over the MDR. And you can see that we are approaching the 25, 30 percentile, and it only goes up as we go further in time. All the way up as far as nearly 40 to 45 percent, we will have a tropical storm in the Atlantic approaching the Caribbean. And let me show you this. This is also very interesting this far out in the storm's history. I'm not going to show you depression. We just looked at tropical storm. This is the probability of a hurricane out in the Atlantic Basin, the central Atlantic Basin. 144 to 168, we don't see anything. At 192, take a look at that. And at 216, that odd only gets a little bit higher. At 240, even higher. We've seen incremental increases as something creeps closer and closer to the Bahama Islands. So you guys got to watch. This is one of the first times I've seen this far out anyways that the Euro wants to spin up a hurricane out over the Atlantic. So it goes without saying, we got to keep our eyes open. We definitely need to keep our radars firing on all cylinders, make sure that we lubricate all the joints, and we keep our heads on a swivel, guys, because this is getting a little more serious as time goes on. Taking a look at the most recent sea surface analysis over the ocean, you can see that the MDR is ripe for development, and as you transition further off to the west, it only gets even more favorable. And as the GFS was alluding to, once you get into those Bahama Islands, you can see that we have a 30 degree Celsius temperature gradient out there that is just hot fuel to the fire that is the internal combustion engine of our hurricane in the future that's way down the line we don't know for certain if she'll be or he'll be in the bahamas however you can see the further west you go the better it is for these systems to continue to deepen and right now i can tell you and i speak for all of us in the southeast we don't need another major hurricane this quickly and unfortunately, the reason I'm in here talking so heavily about the details and the analysis data behind this upcoming feature is because it's looking a little bit worse and worse as we go through time. The trends suggested, and I'm not hyping, I'm not fear mongering. I don't want you guys afraid of this. I want you in touch with this information so we can stay out ahead of it and make our preparations. We have a lot more time than we did with Adalia. Adalia gave us two to four days maximum while she hung out in the Western Caribbean. We can see this storm coming a thousand miles away. She's going to be way out over the African continent, just barely getting into the Atlantic right now as you guys are watching this. So we have lots and lots of lead time to make sure our preparations are in place and to get ahead of whether or not it is going to track in and make it to a major landmass in the Caribbean, the Bahamas, or maybe even the southeastern United States, or at least the mid-Atlantic state coast. I will leave you all here with Weather Prediction Center because once again, as we get closer and closer to ground zero, I love using that terminology. Let's say hypothetically our storm does come very close to the Caribbean Sea, the Bahamas, and the peninsula of Florida. This is 12 Zulu next Friday. This is September 8th. And the reason I want us to start looking at these analysis charts is because this is what's going to tell us if we need to pay close attention to its forward progress this far into the future, or if we can anticipate an eastward curvature back out into open water away from any kind of populated areas in the United States and maybe even the Bahama Islands. So we're going to be diving deep into what our surface analysis charts look like once this storm gets its act together and starts its westward track towards the Caribbean towards the upper portions of the Caribbean Sea or just above the Caribbean for that matter towards the Bahamas. This is going to be telling because we can extrapolate these frontal systems out over the eastern United States into the Atlantic and get a determination of if this storm's going to move north or if it's going to be suppressed and move inland. Now that I've covered all of my bases guys, episode 17, let's start the wrap up. Folks, it goes without saying that the 2023 hurricane season is far from over. These new systems in sight and the Labor Day group that we have going on off the northeastern coastline, the Atlantic is not going to calm down at least for a little while longer. You can absolutely count on Weather Center Nazaria to provide you with the most up-to-date information as we go day by day, hour by hour, with all the new developments that we've been seeing in our model trends and what the forecast looks like. Those of you in the Caribbean, those of you in the Bahamas, Bermuda, and the southeastern United States need to keep up with these updates. 
please, I urge you, after what happened with Hurricane Adalia and with Franklin in the Caribbean Sea, who knows what we have in store for us as we get into the first and second week of September. In the meantime, please like and share this video for folks who may have not discovered my channel or do not follow any up-to-date weather information on social media, mainstream media. I know the news outlets are not yet talking about this, so we are going to be your frontline resource moving forward. But regardless, I will see you next time. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.